welcome to Kicking Back. Uh, it's a very windy episode. It's actually really windy today. Uh, so if you can hear like bangs and crashes going on in the background, just live with it. We're having two. It's very cold, isn't it? How are you? I'm all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it is windy. <laughs> yeah, we'll make do. So we were just talking before, and I want to like pull up on it. Like you, you mentioned like when you were a kid, you met Mario Balotelli. Where? Well, I didn't meet him. I, uh, I oh, saw you saw him. him. Oh, I saw him right, in okay. Manchester from a distance, like right. right over there. Was that quite? How old were you? Were you quite? Was that quite um, mad? I think I'd be starstruck even now. Like I think I'd be like, what is going on? Hang on. It was weird. He was in Pandora, and I think like they gated off the whole Pandora. Oh no! So I That's turned around. And I was like, who's that? And then I realised it was him, and he was just, you know, he was just doing his thing. Nah, I don't like that now. I don't like him gating it off. I think like I once met David Dunn in McDonald's. It was not gated off. I'll tell you that. If anyone knows David Dunn, he was a cracking player for Blackburn Rovers. He was like one of our local legends. Grew up uh, at the club and everything. And I once saw him having a few chicken nuggets. Oh, uh, nice. Very approachable. Very approachable. Too not, approachable. Not the best choice to not, chicken nuggets. Well, uh, to be honest, I didn't really like look into it too much, but I did notice that he had a few different sources as well that you probably wouldn't expect for a Premier League player. But uh, yeah, no, it was quality. And I really liked like... Uh, sort of like I've, I've actually met him a few times since just because he is local you know what I mean like still lives in the area and always seems really down to earth really how normal. do you meet him like well once I was actually working before I started doing the announcing at Rovers like I actually worked for a company uh, where they had their offices right over the Rovers training ground so I used to watch him every day right oh, okay. and then one time I go in and, and uh like I just heard from behind, I was, I was going in with this is a really boring story, but I was going in uh, with a guy called Martin, and I heard from behind us, "Morning, Martin." Turn around, it's David Dunn. Oh, <laughs> like, really? Just stood there, like outside Brockhall, and I was like, "What's going on here?" Do you know what I mean? When you like barely woke up in the morning and you're just like rubbing your head trying to get your <laughs> life together. And it's just like, there's a talk about Premier League Seems contracts. like you bumped into him quite a few times yeah, I know, yeah, I can't get rid of him, to be honest. No, no, but it was cool. Like, I like how approachable he was and stuff like that. And one of our best players as well from back in the day, like a really good number eight, you know, um, held the ball, like did everything you would want from that position. In fact, on that front, what would you say like makes a good number eight? Um, I think, personally, number eight is one of the main players in the team. Like, you know, they've got to get up and down the pitch, pretty much. Like, if they're not attacking, trying to support the attack, they've got to get back and get back with their defenders, you know, tracking runners. For sure, yeah. Being like in the box. Box to box. Yeah. I think uh, it's like, whenever I look at a really good number eight, what I'm seeing is like like a key cog, like the main, yeah. like the engine, you know, yeah, like yeah. the thing that makes everything else work. Like, without yeah. that, it's real. Sometimes I don't think they get the credit they deserve. And then... It's a tough position. It is a tough position. I, I always think as well. Like, I think it, number four is the brains. Right, yeah, yeah. Number I'll eight's the legs. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah, I always remember thinking, like, with uh, with a good number eight, if they weren't there, you'd know. You'd know straight away, you know what I mean? But in some teams, they are just the thing that makes it all function perfectly. Um, some of my favourite number eights over the years, obviously, these are guys who do get the credit. Like, they, it, it goes without saying. But, like, for me, who's the best one? I'm going to go ever. Hmm. Between... I'm going to say, for me, it's Iniesta. Mm, um, of course. But, you know, it's a hard, it's a contested one, isn't it? How about you, like, in terms of favourite number I mean, of ever? course, Iniesta was incredible. Unbelievable. I think definitely you've got to have that kind of skill as well. You know, the way he could keep the ball so close to him yeah. was unbelievable. He's from another planet, isn't he? Yeah. Really? Like, he just... knew where everyone was on the pitch as yeah. well, where the space was, where all the players were, where the, all the opposition were. I think also, you know, going flip side, I think Skulls. Yes, of course. Like, yeah, yeah. when I was younger, I didn't really watch him that much. Like, I wasn't really watching United when I was younger. But I think, you know, watching him back and knowing how he plays now, now I've got older, I think he was really good. Yeah. Oh, really good. Unbelievable. Yeah, I remember. Like, we were one of, one of my favourite players growing up as a kid, to be honest. Um, I used to really like the old Arsenal team and I used to really like, briefly... And, it would, and I ain't, I ain't going to lie, right? I used to really like United as a kid, which will probably get me some stick, but it were only because the hardest lad in school like United. <laughs> so we all had to pretend <laughs> we, we enjoyed them. Um, and I remember in that time, there were a few players I fell in love with. One were Roy Keane and one were Paul Scholes. Mm. Um, and Paul Scholes is literally what I was talking about. It's like the engine of that team for a time, you know? Yeah, like he could yeah. pick out a pass unbelievably. There's a video of him 
like from a few years ago, which is crazy that he's still got this level of skill, but there's a video of him literally just booting a ball back and forth. There's some pundits who are like old mates, might have even been Gary Neville, and he literally just picks out Gary Neville's head. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, and Gary, Gary's just giving his opinion on game. Yeah, he should be a close one, bop, <laughs> on back at Ed, and I'm like, what a legend. Yeah, what it was icon. a good one. Unbelievable. Right, um, we'll, we'll carry on with this a little bit. I just want to say thank you very much to uh, our sponsor for this week. It's Northern Gym Equipment. Um, if you are in the market to get yourself some nice new gym equipment, but you like a touch of northern hospitality as well you can go to liftsandgravy.com these guys will sort you out these guys are uh, different in the sense that they don't just want to sell you the stuff and all the best they want to know how they can help you so if you need some advice or if you need classes or any further maintenance once you've actually got the stuff these guys are there for you so you can check them out in the description below or you can just head on over to liftsandgravy.com and we would like to say thanks very much as well for them uh, coming on board as well because like I say uh, they're local they've got good customer service they're good people it's what you want really so yeah listengravy.com and thank you very much again to those guys so we mentioned Iniesta Paul Scott any other names come to mind for you in terms of like when you're thinking of your favourites I mean I don't know about favourites but I think a good number eight we've got to mention is Gerard. oh yeah of course, of course. yeah I mean, this was the England's old problem back in the day, wasn't it? It's yeah. like we have so many good players in yeah, that spot. Yeah. And that's why it was frustrating. I remember growing up, like, really having some tearful times watching England because I'm like, why is Skulls playing where he's playing? You know, yeah, they just didn't yeah. know where to put everybody. Um, but Gerard was definitely up there as one of the best ones. Isn't it weird, like, with footballers? Sometimes they, they can put years and years and years of work in solidifying themselves in a position, but one slip. You know what I mean? It, it, I think that's bad, that. No, I'm saying, though. Like, I wasn't going to bring it up. <laughs> but it is, it's just the moment, isn't it? Put him in YouTube. I, I think fair play, you know. He's, I say fair play, like fair play, Stephen Gerrard. He's done a bit, and he's done quite well, but, you know. You know, since then, actually, I never... I, I'm always careful of what I say before games. I'm not even imagine. joking. <laughs> I am always careful. Because I think if you say something like that... Like, look what happened, you know. I'm honestly really superstitious after that happened. I could so know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just don't want to do it, I just do don't like, say things like that. Yeah, you, I think you're right. Like, sometimes you just got to, like, throw out some lines in it. Good game, looking yeah. forward to it. Don't like, say it. <laughs> let's not let it drop. Yeah, like, yeah, you never yeah. know what could happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I get it, yeah. Um, Poor guy. <laughs> Kaka as well, there's another. Oh, uh, yeah. Kaka. I used to love him when I was little. Yeah, I he used to really great. rate that team. So I was always like a bit of a goalkeeper shock horror. And one of the things I used to really love about AC Milan was Dida. Like, that's who got me watching him. Um, he was athletic as anything. And then I go and check out, like, he's making unbelievable saves. I goes on Wikipedia, he's like 83. Did you know that? <laughs> he's a very old goalkeeper, but still, like, so impressive. And then that whole team, Cafu. Uh, right but scary yeah. scary like that team was just unbelievable and again Kaka I think he's one of these who is norm it's normally an invisible role but it's impossible to be invisible when you're that good right yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Inspire. right so now we're going to try and play a game called build a team where we're going to be given five different clubs and once we've got the club we have to pick a player from that team and they are in our five aside right and then at the end we're both going to have a five aside team and we'll decide which one's better if they win the game okay right so are you good to go with the team Okay, so you can pick anyone, but you have to have a goalkeeper. That's okay, the rule, right? Okay. You have to have a goalkeeper. Uh, right, okay, go for it. Oh. Mighty Cash. Coutinho. Leno. Mitrovic. Mitrovic. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> can, wait, can it be anyone that's ever played for Fulham? That, that, that's that's what I thought. true, actually. That's what I thought it was, yeah. All yeah. right, it can be. <laughs> you put me nervous then. I was like, hang on, are we having to do current players? Go for it, because Coutinho is... Where is he now? Is he still at Villa? He's just gone, hasn't he? Go on. Saudi. <laughs> if in doubt. Liverpool. Liverpool. Um, Gerard. Oh, brutal. Hmm. Van Dijk. Uh, Who's my team now? Oh, right. Who have we got here? Shevchenko. Petr Cech. Oh, I should have said Chef <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Pulse goals. Eric Cantona. <laughs> <laughs> right, all right. We're going to have to think about these teams now. Right, so my team is in goal, number one, uh, Petr Cech. Defending, I don't know why I'll do it like that, but like Virgil van Dijk, 
Paul Scholes, good team this actually, I think I've won on that. Uh, I think you are. Coutinho as well, playmaker, and then Mitrovic up front. Oddly. That's nice, that. I, like that. I like that. Who's yours? Mine was Leno. Yeah. And then <laughs> defending alone is Matty Cash. <laughs> <laughs> and then in midfield, Gerard. And then up front, to be fair, we don't need defence with Eric Cantona and Shevchenko. I think the argument who needs defence is you a weak defend, one. You you, might. Your offence is your defence <laughs> in my team. I think you should have sold him a bit better, though, when you were defending alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's with a single tear dripping down his cheek. Do you think you won? Yeah. What do you mean? Do you think you won? Yeah. Right. I'll tell you what, let's put it. Let's put it to an audience vote for the first time ever. That's a new one. Right, we'll, uh, we'll leave it, right? I don't know how this will work. We're going to put it on Instagram, on stories or something like that. Just say who you think won. If it is me, which... I don't think it is. If it is, just say. And if it isn't, just leave it. Just scroll <laughs> on to the next video. All right. Well. Poor Matty Cash. <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, yeah. <laughs> Poor lad. No, I'm happy with that. I like that. That went okay. Um, yeah, let us know in the comments and all that good stuff. Uh, but in the meantime, I'd like to say thanks very much. Oh, we have a new sponsor. Oh. Delicious. Thank you very much to Frederick's Ice Cream for coming on board. Now, do you know what's right good about having a sponsor you can fully back? Do you know what I mean? Like, there's no need for a pitch. There's no need for nothing. Frederick's Ice Cream, right? Delicious. Unbelievable. They've got stores in Chorley and Wigan. They are Northwest based. And another thing, hundreds of flavours. You can't think of... There's a challenge for you. Think of a flavour that they don't have. They've got, we were going through some before. Barbie flavour. Barbie the movie flavour. Barbie the movie. Team GB flavour. There's nothing you could think of. If you can, they'll go make it. They, they, want, they want suggestions. This is a dream factory. Uh, it's the tastiest stuff going. I swear, one scoop and you'll be hooked. I know I am. Um, so you can go and check them out at frederickscicecream.co.uk. All the links will be below as well. They are in the socials. But honest to God, just I'm telling you, one scoop seriously. And save a bit for me. frederickscicecream.co.uk. Thanks very much. Uh, so, yes, I think that will pretty much do us for this week. One question I've got for you. Go for what it. What did you think of Arsenal Tottenham? I know we spoke about oh, it last week. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Hey, we both said 2-1, I think. We did. We did. We? So we two, did. Two, do you know what? My, my sort of admiration for Postacoglu continues. I think this guy's top notch. Um, he won manager of the month. I did sort of say like I fancied Tottenham to win it, but um, do you know what? It sort of went similarly to how I saw it going regardless of result. Uh, really good game. And another thing I'll say is, uh, Post I know this isn't quite your question, but I'll come back to it. Uh, Postacoglu seems like such a decent bloke. It's untrue. I saw he was doing a little Q&A and he was wrapping it up. And there was someone who'd been waiting ages for a question. He made sure, do you know what I mean? No, no, yeah, no, we're not yeah. stopping. Go and get that person. I just thought top notch. And you see so many little moments like that, that um, I think it's, you can't fake that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you catch it all the time, there's so many eyes on you. So I just think top bloke, seems like a top manager. And I, I'm actually really, I, I'll, I'll go out on a limb for the first time in my life. I'm enjoying Tottenham in my life. My whole life, I'm enjoying them. They're all right. They're yeah, not doing bad. Bailey I like that. Decent, so. Sorry, go on. I like that Madison Son connection. Oh yeah, that yeah, was yeah. really good at the weekend. Unreal. And I'll tell you something else as well. For people who were worried about life after Kane, they must just be buzzy right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Know? Um, they didn't want to get rid of him for the longest time. Completely understand that. But what you're seeing now looks like a really new look, Tottenham. It's you know? funny, isn't it? Because he was there for so long, and then when you take a figure like that out. But, you know, I don't think teams understand Tottenham again, yes. whereas before, in right. the last seasons, they have. Right. It's like it's the, it's the old thing of like teams who come up, they can do really well in that first year, right? And then, they have, then the other teams have a bit of time to think, ah, OK, got yeah. you. I remember when Sheffield United came up and they were like unbelievable for a season. I can't remember where they finished, but it was definitely like top half. And then year after, it's like they are a shadow of what they were, but they're not. They're, they're playing mm, yeah. the same stuff. It's just other teams have got wines. I think it's such a... a fast-paced league in terms of like how quickly you have to adapt and I stuff know, know. actually the game fascinates me from that perspective but that's a story for another time yeah. i could, I could yeah. really get into all that so yeah uh thanks very much for watching everybody um if you want to like and subscribe and all that good stuff you can do if you uh if you want to say that matty cash is better than van dyke feel free to <laughs> leave that comment who are, who hey, are at you at the though? minute he is no. at the minute he is <laughs> and he's all alone uh but <laughs> yeah alone. cheers for watching uh we'll be back with another one uh next week but until then enjoy the football and have a wonderful time peace out